So this is the Dallas Morning News, November 23rd, 1963, 50 pages, um, 5 cents, and this is a very significant newspaper because this is the very first full coverage of the John F. Kennedy assassination in Dallas, by a Dallas newspaper. So what we're going to talk about is a lot. Um, we're going to talk about the assassination and the history. We're going to go through the paper. We're going to go through each page to talk about what's going on. And I'm going to point out kind of hidden details and I almost want to use the word Easter eggs, but things that would figure in to the story, the narrative, things that would change, and just things that are just sort of unsettling. So, yes, this is, uh, I've got my coffee, and I anticipate this might be kind of a long video. We've got the pages to go through. So, let's begin. Um, as you can see, this is the front page. Um, Johnson becomes president, Lyndon Johnson. And there's a picture of John Kennedy here. Johnson there. Um, Johnson receives oath on aircraft. Yes, the oath was administered to him by a female judge, and that was the first time in history that a female judge administered the oath. Governor Connolly resting well. Governor Connolly is John Connolly. He was the governor of Texas, and he was also shot at the same time as President Kennedy, but he was not killed. Impact shattering to world capitals. Pro-communist charge with act. So they've already got some information on Lee Harvey Oswald, the assassin. And it's, if you consider how long it takes for them to find information nowadays versus then, there is a surprising amount of information in this newspaper on him. So, um, day began as auspiciously as any day in Kennedy's career. This was supposed to be a routine trip. Um, and, uh, there was, it, it, it wasn't anything that was supposed to get a lot of attention. He was going to Dallas for political reasons. Funeral for president will be held on Monday. At this time, they figured that he would be buried in the family plot in Brookline, Massachusetts. But actually, as we know, he would be buried in Arlington National Cemetery. That decision was made uh, very close to the time he was buried. Here's all of the... Uh, the highlights, uh, assassin fires three shots in the car, pandemonium rubs at scene, massive blood transfusions given. Um, I'm going to attach a link to the uh, KLIF radio coverage of the assassination. I suggest you listen to it if you want a time capsule that fits perfectly with this paper because I'm going to be referencing it a lot uh, as we go through this. Bullet strikes coming back. Officers launch two city manhunt that will be Fort Worth and Dallas. Shooting described by a woman. This is not the Kennedy shooting, but the, the third shooting of the day, which was of police officer J.D. Tippett. And we'll talk more about that as we go. Suspect had lived in Russia, so they already have that much information about him. Prayer led by Reverend Holcomb. Hundreds gathered around hospital. Announcement of death made. Here's some more information about Connolly. About the reaction. Here's the data cram the table of contents and the weather right here. Obviously a very busy paper day. This paper was this paper was also organized really quickly. This is a inside of the book depository in Dallas where Oswald was said to have shot Kennedy. This is the sniper's nest. This is the view from the window of the of Elm Street uh, going under the triple overpass, which was a railroad bridge. And the shooting occurred right around there. In that general area is starting starting after he was out from under the street I believe the first shot was fired then a second and then a third final shot was around this point here there's the Texas book depository also called the Sexton building at the time there was a Hertz rent a car sign not that Chevrolet sign it was Hertz rent a car and actually I think I think that is the rent a car sign yeah Okay, it's just hard to make out, even though it says Chevrolet's. This is a, a drawing of the floor, 
And there's an article here that says that the 6-4 was rarely used, but that, I've never seen that story turn up anywhere else. So that's one, so far one odd and unsettling detail in this paper is an article saying that he might have possibly hid there for days and that it was a floor that was rarely visited. But it was this floor that was constantly visited because it was part of the warehouse where they would get lists of books and fill orders. So this article doesn't make any sense. Uh, this, these two articles talk about other presidents who died in office, four assassinated, three who died of natural causes. Most Dallas firms and offices shut doors. Linda Johnson surpassed his grandfather's prophecy that he would be just a senator and become his president. Famous picture of Linda being sworn in, a very distraught Jackie Kennedy, very somber looking Lady Bird Johnson. There's a picture of Linda, Lyndon, Lady Bird Johnson, Lucy, and Linda Bird Johnson. Um, a picture of Oswald. Um, London on the killing. Um, 16 persons investigated in Fort Worth. Hoover orders full probe. This is uh, the morning of the assassination. John F. Kennedy, uh, there's Governor Colin Connolly of Texas, there's Johnson, and I believe that is uh, Senator Yarborough, or it's either that or the mayor of Dallas, uh, or mayor of Fort Worth, I'm not sure. Um, this is uh, Erlene Roberts, she rented a room to Oswald, and he used an alias to rent the room, O.H. Lee, which was strange. Suspected killer defected to Russia in 1959. There's a lot of information about Oswald here. Um, had they know he passed out pro Castro leaflets in New Orleans, he had been arrested. I'm telling you, they had a lot of information available on him. Um, they have a radio interview that he was on called Conversation Carte Blanc on station W. WDSU in New Orleans. Uh, it's just a lot of information about Oswald. Suspect's mother says backs turn on me. MacArthur sends regrets to Jack D. And what we're going to start seeing as we get deeper into the paper are these memorial ads by businesses. E.M. Kahn and Company. Here's a dress shop that's just running their regular ad for dresses. That 1960s look, kind of stewardess looking. A Dennis the Menace comic. Here's some other news. Um, Red Leader harps on an Autobahn issue. Uh, this is when Germany was still half controlled by Russia. And everyone comments was called Red. Here's some TVs for prices that are much more expensive than nowadays. Wade calls, Wade is the district attorney of Dallas, and he calls the killing a dastardly act. Authority over trial questioned. They're wondering if Oswald should be tried in Texas or somewhere else. Yeah, Packard Bell TV. Tele television was huge. Just like in the last newspaper we talked about in 1933, this is 30 years later, and it said radios. And there are a few radios, but it's television and record players. Deep grief expressed by clergymen. Vigil in hospital. Here's uh, the Dallas Civic Opera is talking about changes to their performances because of the incident. Uh, six members of the cabinet were on their way to Japan and they were reversed. Look how the newsprint's rubbing off on my fingers. Uh, more radios and more TVs, but TVs outnumber radios three to one. Mexican Canada vows to press anti-red war. Yep, it is the Cold War. 
Kennedy in Fort Lewis kept darting into crowds. So they're talking about how he was, you know, comfortable with the crowds. And it's just interesting that they would put that ad in. Empty chair. This was where Kennedy was supposed to sit at the Dallas trademark. The last speech Kennedy was going to deliver, he was talking about the TFX, which was actually the um, F-111. See, that was the classified name of F-111 aircraft. It's TFX stood for Tactical Fighter Experimental. Sears Robot Company. There's a picture of the rifle that they were continually calling a Mauser. Eventually they said it was a Manlicher Carcano, Italian made World War II era rifle. Um, out of deepest respect for our beloved president, the play yards will be closed Saturday. In memory of John F. Kennedy, Lou Lattimore. Uh, Pre-Christmas sale at the Goodyear service stores. Um, I don't believe these exist anymore, but Back in 1963, they didn't just sell tires. Goodyear also sold televisions. They sold coffee table stereos, GE branded products. They had a, a relationship with General Electric, as you can see. And they sold GE flashlights. But they also sold drink uh, glasses, drinking glasses, um, mixing bowls. It was They were trying to make a, a sort of a general store. I guess that venture didn't work out very well. Mrs. Kennedy's secretary praises new first lady. 1947 law set up order for president succession. World that has toasted Jackie weeps for her. There's a picture of Jackie Kennedy. That's them transporting his body. Body present to rest on catafalque in the White House, the same catafalque used by Abraham Lincoln. There's Bobby Kennedy guiding uh, Jackie, as you can still see, she still has blood on her dress. Um, Nixon caused lost tragic. Interestingly, Nixon was in Dallas the day Kennedy was assassinated. There's also, it's also said that George H. Walker Bush was in Dallas too. Johnson was in Dallas. A lot of people were in Dallas. Bill Paxton was in Dallas. Goldwater, Barry Goldwater was Kennedy's biggest opponent for the upcoming election. John F. Kennedy, 43, youngest elected president. He was young, good looking. This is a sort of um, list of his accomplishments. He was the first to pay, face possibility of nuclear warfare. Um, I, I guess you could say that. I guess the arms race really escalated in 1960 when Eisenhower was president. The biggest concern was the was the end of the Korean War, and then there was a long period of prosperity. But I would say that the uh, threat of nuclear war certainly existed in the 1950s. Buddy, come here. He's gonna make noise. I just wanna get his attention so he won't dig around because that's what he likes to do when I make videos. Now, here's a few things that I wanna point out. If I didn't lose his head, okay. Here's the uh, movie and entertainment pages. Now, if you listen to the KLIF broadcast, if you want to know the exact moment that President Kennedy was actually shot, it would be when the ad for the Wheeler Dealers is playing, starring James Gardner and Lee Remick. That is the exact moment of the shooting. Um, you also hear ads for McClintock starring John Wayne. You'll hear ads for Take Her, She's Mine. James Stewart and Sandra D. Interestingly, this is um, a Promises Promises is a famous adult movie, uh, I guess you could say. 
uh, the equivalent of X-rated, starring Jane Mansfield, uh, fully nude, which was kind of, uh, this is very, you know, risque and, and racy for 1963. Nowadays it would probably be rated PG-13, but at the time it was incredibly shocking. Here's an ad for the Texas Theater, and it says, Van Heflin in and Rita Marino in Cry of Battle, plus War is Hell. This is the exact theater that Lee Harvey Oswald ran into after the assassination, where he was captured, and those are the two movies that were on the marquee, if you find the famous photograph. So that's quite interesting. As we keep looking, we'll see some ads for burlesque clubs in Dallas, and... If you look here, it says closed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Carousel Club. That is the club owned by Jack Ruby, who would go on to shoot Lee Harvey Oswald the very next day. So, it's quite interesting to see this here. There's just a lot of uh, very interesting little details that would definitely turn up. Decade of Lassie. More ads about the assassination. Uh, here's some more articles about the life of Kennedy when he was young. It's kind of funny to me how these ads below somewhat resemble Kennedy in these pictures here. Sports loses a great friend. Nearly every single page is talking about the shooting of Kennedy. Here we get to uh, the market section. This man will save you money on 64 olds. Singer Harris talks about how the stock market closed. Dallas Morning News it's supposed to buy it half mast. North Haven Gardens. Camellias for Christmas. Tropical foliage prints. Holland balls. The carriage shop. Memorial John F. Kennedy. This is uh, a lot of ads for flowers. You gotta wonder, and I don't know how common flower ads were in the 60s in the Dallas Morning News, but you gotta wonder if they were thinking in terms of sending flowers and they were trying to amp up some business. I don't know. Here's more about the assassination. You can see the layout was done very quickly. Lee Marcus half page. Mayor Cabell declares day of prayer for JFK. I, Mayor Cabell was the brother of um, Henry Cabell, I believe, was uh, a chairman of the Joint Chiefs or something. Uh, but Kennedy fired him not too long before this president's murder charge to Oswald. Here we have the comics. Ask Andy, can a penguin swim? Watches. The, the, the comics are um, BC, Judge Parker, Steve Rupert, Peanuts, Sir Bagby, Mickey Finn, Steve Canyon, Mary Drake and Mary Worth. 
Buenos Dias, Lou Abner, Penny, Rex Morgan, Apartment 3G, Nancy, Pogo, Mark Trio, and David Crane. Here's the Little People's Puzzle. Columbia gets a visit from President Eisenhower. Um, the editorial page and political cartoon page. The political cartoon shows a picture of um, Uncle Sam with his head bowed down. John Nance Gardner review of all day. Cactus Jack sat back and puffed peacefully to cigar. It's 95th birthday. He was a vice president, and uh, after his two terms as vice president, he moved to Texas and he swore never to go north of the Mason Dixon line ever again. Robert Stroud, the Birdman of Alcatraz, died. Something about the purpose of Christmas. As we commemorate the birth of the Prince of Peace, may we let him reign supreme in our hearts. Christmas has been commercialized and alcoholized and has been made a terrible rat race. The true spirit of Christmas cannot be found in bottles. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think that changed anything 50 years later. This is an article about Officer J.D. Tippett, who was also slain by Oswald. Take a good look at him. His nickname on the police force was JFK. It's interesting. His uncanny resemblance to John F. Kennedy. I always found that quite interesting. Uh, Governor John Connolly. Connolly's sister. Bookseller freed from smut charge. A jury of three men and three women found Robert R. Clark innocent Friday of charges that he sold obscene literature. Prosecutor, prosecutors charged that Clark violated the 1961 law by selling Girls of Club Sappho, a sexy paperback novel, in Newsland bookstore at 1629 Elm. Elm being the same street where Kennedy was assassinated. Attorneys Fred Bruner and Jerry Lastelick, who defended Clark, said the sexy passages in the book were no more lurid than those in books circulated by libraries. They claimed also that Clark could not know the contents of every book he sold. Connolly wanted President to call off trip to Texas. Hmm, I never heard that either. This man saves you money on 64 olds. Now here we are in the death notices and obituaries. Um, and it, interestingly, in the common obituaries section for just the regular residents of Dallas, if you scroll down like anybody else, you'll see Kennedy. President John F. Beloved husband of Jacqueline Kennedy, dear father of John and Caroline Kennedy, parents, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Kennedy, brothers Robert and Ted Kennedy, sisters Mrs. Peter Lawford, Mrs. Robert Shriver. It's an interestingly um, that they, they put that in there. And here is the obituary for J.D. Tippett. J.D. Tippett, Glenn Cairn, survived by wife Mrs. Marie Tippett, sons Alan and Curtis Tippett, daughter Mrs. Brenda Tippett, parents Edgar Tippett, and Mrs. May, Peterson, brothers Donald, Ray, Wayne, Edward, Ronnie Tippett, sisters Mrs. Christine, Christopher, Mrs. Joyce Depper. Arrangements pending. Very interesting. Buying time down at Hein, Conrad, Hein Pontiac. A lot of car ads. And more. Snuffy Smith.
this motor company. Um, I just want to point this out. This was 1963, and it was still somewhat the Jim Crow era. So in the want ads and employment ads, they would specify um, what race was was being sought after. So um, that's just an interesting piece of history. Um, this was a different time altogether. Lots and lots of lots of places to live. to the last page and there's a religious um, come let us go into the house of the Lord um, uh, three-quarter page ad for a church on the lot on the back an article about a deadlock jury and trial a hairdresser a crossword puzzle Interesting. So, this is the Dallas Morning News, the Kennedy paper, and there's a lot to be covered here, and uh, it's definitely a snapshot of history. I hope you found the little details that I pointed out to be interesting. And just to remind you, um, Oswald will be shot the very next day by the man who owned that carousel club. whose ad was in this very paper. I also want to remind you, if you get a chance, and if you have some time to listen to the KLIF broadcast, and I told you the cue to look for, this movie ad. It's haunting. The first announcement occurs when a song So, something about, I've, I've Got a Boyfriend, I think is the name of the song, by, it was one of the girl groups in the 60s, and they, they break into that song to announce the death, then they play some more music, they have some more ads. Uh, there was the Chiffons is the are is the group who plays the song that's cut into. So that's the first notification. And then I, uh, it goes on a little bit longer before they finally just cancel everything and they go into straight coverage of the assassination. And you can hear the changes in the voices. You can hear the sense of dread and urgency. So. And it goes on through all 
through the night. There's, I believe, almost every hour of it is recorded. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you tomorrow night.